puts out the best in us that that teams if if teams identify us as the team to beat and they're gearing up uh to go with at us you know head to head that just that makes us work harder um so bring it on Jeannie looks great, by the way. So does Perk. Jeannie Perk, is great. how we doing? Good to see you. <laughs> I mean, no, honest, honestly, I wasn't here when she was on the show. Um, she, she she looks great. Not that that's the point of this. All right, she was on a show you might have heard of on ESPN+. Plus. It's a fan favorite. It's called Stephen A's World, and that's where that interview Molly, was. Uh, Stephen A, I Molly, was, did, you hear, yeah. did, you hear, did you hear that Perk? You know, he got a condo in it. He got a condo in Stephen A's world. Did you hear? Did you hear him say that? What? He, he said that's what he said. He said no. I'm on Steve. He showed up on Stephen A's world. I'm in Stephen A's world, and I got a condo in it. That's what he mm -hmm. said. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. it's, it's right though. He's right. He's right. Yeah. He's right. Yeah, I think it needs a little. Well, I, I think condo. it needs to be refurbished a little bit, a little remodeling. But he's got a condo in it. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, Stephen A. How do you think the league should feel about Jeannie's comments on the Nets? I think they should love it, um, particularly when we see how they loading up in Brooklyn. Uh, Jeannie Buss is saying, hold your horses. We're the reigning, defending NBA champions, and we think we're going to have something to say about all of that in the end. We just picked up Andre Drummond, who averages nearly 14 rebounds a game in his career. Uh, we, we expect to have Anthony Davis back. LeBron James, we have no doubt he will be back. And so when you consider the pieces that we have in place, we think we're going to have something to say about, you know, who, who's standing in the end. And that's what she's saying, and that's the kind of mentality that you want champions to have. She's basically staking claim to the fact that she doesn't believe that the Lakers are going anywhere for the foreseeable future. And the lovely, incomparable Board of Governors for the Los Angeles Lakers has significant credibility when she says such things. And I sincerely hope that's going to be the case this season. There's a level of what we used to say, gangsterism, in Jeannie Buss, just like her father. They are not sweating what you're doing. They, got, they get crewed up. Look, here's the thing about the Lakers and the Buss family. Dr. Jerry Buss, the late, great Dr. Jerry Buss, was by far the greatest owner in the history of American team sports. Please don't embarrass anybody else by comparing them to him. Trust me. Look at the resume. Jeannie Buss, a chip off the old block. And think how hard it is to be her that way because you're following an impossible act to follow. And yet, even though she upheld her father's basically dying wish, keep the family together, you know, with the team, and kept her brother in the position running the team probably an extra year that she should have, for four years instead of three years, she eventually said, okay, enough, we got to win. Took over the team, and since she's been calling the shots and put her basketball people in place... Three years later, they won a championship. They won a championship in three years. And now they're looking to defend. And she knows if her squad is healthy, she's not looking for an unfair advantage against the Nets, right? Ed, let the Nets get crewed up. The Lakers are crewed up and let the chips fall where they may. They're not sweating it. Love me some Jeannie Buss. How could you not, as a Lakers fan, how could you not love that attitude? Right. As a competitor, how can you not love that attitude? We have to remember who Jeannie Buss has been around also and watch grow into uh, one of the greatest players of all time, in my opinion, Kobe Bryant. She came out with the Mamba mentality. That's a Mamba mentality. Bring it on. We are the defending champs. I got arguably the best duo since Kobe and Shaq. And here's the thing, right? You got to love the competitive nature. And I look back in 2016, when the other super team was formed and in, 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 in down there in the Bay Area with the Golden State Warriors, the great Greg Popovich from the San Antonio Spurs, when asked about him at the beginning of the season, he said, I get it, right? Don't quote me on this. I may not have it all right, but I know he said something along the lines of, don't, don't, we understand how great of a team they are on paper, but who's going to beat them? That's the thing. Who's going to step up and try to beat them? And when you look at what happened to them when the Spurs and them met up in the Western Conference Finals, the San Antonio Spurs had them down 20 at halftime before Zaza Pachulia slid his big size 23s up under Kawhi Leonard Feet, who was tearing them up, by the way, 26 points in 23 minutes. So I love the competitive nature. I mean, it should bring out the best of every team. Who's going to beat them? Who's going to try to beat this Nets team that is stacking up right now? That's the spirit you want to have.
That's exactly what we need to. We need to be reminded of that. We need to re, we, we need to be reminded of the importance of competition. I mean that, that. See, this is what it is about basketball, man. It's like the a team sport is a team sport. We get it, but it's like when a batter shows up, Max, to play baseball. When he when he shows up to the batter's box, it's about him against that pitch at that particular moment in time. One of the things that I hate and absolutely detest in the words was I, I don't know if I hate anything more than the intention to walk. I don't know if I hate anything more because that's you basically saying, you know what, I, I, I don't want to compete against you. Well, it's your manager you know saying, saying but, that. Yeah, yeah, I know it's your manager, but guess what? The manager never told Randy Johnson that, wouldn't tell Roger Clemens that, wouldn't tell some of the great, great, I mean, one of my, Nolan Ryan and others that, no, guess, guess, you know what they would have done to them if a manager told them to intentionally walk somebody? No, we ain't going out like that. Let's get it on. And I'm saying you transfer that to basketball. And one of the things that I think is incredibly important to remind everybody, that's what we really, really want to see. You know, one of the things, one of the reasons why I backed off, even though I called it when KD went to Golden State, the weakest move I'd ever seen by a superstar. The reason I backed off about that is because I never forget the first moments of that finals when he was finally in the finals for Golden State against LeBron in Cleveland. He scored the jump shot and then clapped his hands and put and spread his arms wide, defending against LeBron like, let's go. It was his way of saying, okay. Here we go now. Why is you know, his mom I, went I, at you? I just said, no, 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 no. I did apologize to Mama. I mean, Mama, I mean, Mama, Mama Durant. I mean, come on, I love Mama Durant. Now, I mean, I got soft <laughs> spot for that. Lady. But what I'm saying to you is that the point is, he was sitting there saying, "Let's go. It's me and you now. You had your crew. I got my crew. Now it's me and you." I'm just saying, we want to see that it's important in the sport of basketball. That's how basketball became but the popular. Is, but the thing about the Lakers is, you're right, I'm, I'm with that attitude. The thing about being a Lakers fan, or in Jeannie's case, the owner of the team, mm -hmm. is that when you're like, okay, let's go, right. right? You're coming at them with Shaq and Kobe, with Magic and Kareem, yeah. with LeBron and AD. You're not coming at them with... You yeah. know, you talk about Blake and LaMarcus Aldridge. You're not coming at him with CP3 and Blake, which was a great combination, but it's not enough. So Jeannie's saying, come on, we got two MVP players on the team. We got who we need. Let's go. That's the thing about the Lakers. They'll get their guys. They'll get guys, even if it's not, oh, this is unfair. Because back in the day, the Celtics were just as good as the Lakers. Will, now, let's see, hey, right? KP, hey, hey, Kendrick, this, Kendrick, before you say anything else, I will uh, do have an open confession to make. When the Lakers are winning basketball games, the the, the breeze in L.A., yeah, the, the, the palm trees, it <laughs> just <laughs> feels a little different. There's, there's something a little extra special about L.A. when the Lakers are relevant. It's just, it a, little, be. It's just a little ambiance in the air. It just feels good. I just want to so say. So basically, basically, to sum it all up, Jeannie Buss just said, in the words of Patrick Beverly, I ain't trying to hear all that. Jump ball. Mr. Jump ball. Right. Amen. Carry on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Perfect. Go ahead, Let's Molly. Keep it going, guys. Uh, on the subject of the Nets here, we got uh, Blake Griffin isn't having any of it. Just another all-star on the new team filled with all-stars. <laughs> Laughed off criticisms of unfairness after the team acquired him, James Harden and LaMarcus Aldridge, all within the past two and a half months. Perk, I want to start with you. Is the criticism of Blake and Aldridge justify that they're kind of ring chasing on this bandwagon of the Nets? Yeah. Yeah, it is because here it is, Molly. Like, these are not guys that were role players on the team on another team and came over to join the Brooklyn Nets. Like, when I was at the tail end of my career, I've been a role player all my life. But at the end of my career, I knew I wasn't getting minutes, but I wanted to get on a team that I could win a championship with. I'm, I, it was different. I knew I wasn't getting in the game. I knew I had to be a locker room guy, the ultimate professional, a veteran leader. It was a difference for me because I was a role player. These are two guys that are former All-Stars, guys that got paid hundreds of millions of dollars that probably had other options where they could go and actually contribute. 